Today, we're diving into something that almost every IT professional has struggled with at some point, SSL and TLS certificates. I recently came across a Reddit thread where a system administrator confessed something that resonated with thousands of people. They said, I've been a sysadmin for years and I still don't truly understand certificates. I can renew them, I can install them, but I have no idea what's actually happening. And you know what? The responses were incredible. 20-year veterans admitting they just know the steps. Self-proclaimed cert guys sharing that it took them sitting down for hours to finally get it. One person hilariously summed it up as, they are some kind of magic. So today we're going to break down the mystery. By the end of this video, you'll understand not just how to work with certificates, but what is actually happening behind the scenes. Let's get started. Imagine you're visiting a website. Let's say your bank. Your computer needs to send your password to the bank's server. But here's the problem. The internet is like a public highway. Your data is traveling through dozens of routers, switches, and networks to get there. Without encryption, it's like shouting your password across a crowded room. Anyone listening can hear it. So we need encryption. We need to scramble that data so only the bank server can read it. But now we have a new problem. How do you scramble the data in a way that only the bank can unscramble it? If you send the bank a key to unscramble the data, well, you just sent that key across the same public highway. Anyone who intercepted the key can now decrypt everything. This is where the magic of public key infrastructure comes in. And I promise you, once you understand this one concept, everything else falls into place. Here's the beautiful solution. What if there were two keys? A public key and a private key. The public key can only encrypt data. The private key can only decrypt data. They are mathematically linked, like a lock and key, but you can't figure out the private key even if you have the public key. So the bank publicly shares its public key. Anyone can have it. Your computer uses that public key to encrypt your password. Now, even though that encrypted data is traveling over the public internet, only the bank's private key can decrypt it. And the bank keeps that private key secret locked away on their server. That's the foundation. That's the core concept of asymmetric encryption. Okay, so we understand public and private keys, but where do certificates fit in? Great question, because there's still a problem. Let me show you. Your computer connects to what it thinks is your bank's website. The server sends you a public key and says, hey, I'm your bank.com, use this public key to encrypt your data. But mm, how do you know that server is actually your bank? What if it's a hacker who registered a lookalike domain? What if someone is intercepting your connection and pretending to be the bank? This is where certificates come in. A certificate is basically a digital ID card. It says, this public key belongs to your bank.com and we verified it. But wait, anyone could create a fake ID card, right? So who's doing the verifying? This is where certificate authorities come in. Companies like DigiCert, Let's Encrypt, or VeriSign. These are organizations that your computer already trusts. Here's a mind-blowing fact. Your operating system shipped with a bunch of certificates already installed from these major certificate authorities. Microsoft, Apple, Google, they all include a pre-approved list of organizations they trust. You never see it, but it's there. So now let's get back to our example and see what's happening when you visit your bank. Your browser, like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or anything else you might use, say to the, the website, heybank.com, show me your SSL certificate. The website send back its certificate, which includes its public key and the name of the certificate authority that issued it. Then your browser checks if is this certificate still valid and not expired? Is it issued by a trusted authority? Does the domain on the certificate match the website I'm visiting? If all those checks pass, your browser says, cool, I trust you, and the encrypted connection begins. That's the TLS handshake, the behind the scenes conversation that happens in milliseconds. During this handshake, both sides agree on how to encrypt data, which algorithms to use, and they generate something called a session key. This key is temporary and used only for that session, making your communication both fast and secure. It's like locking your conversation in a one-time vault that only you and the website can open. And the beautiful part is that you don't even notice it happening. The little padlock icon appears and you just browse safely. But under the hood, a whole orchestra of cryptography is playing in perfect sync. Now here's something most people don't realize. Not all SSL certificates 
are the same. There are three main types, domain validation, it the most common and easiest to get, used by most websites, organization validation, it includes business verification, and extended validation, are those fancy green bar ones that used to show the company name in browsers. But the level of encryption is the same. The difference is only in how much the owner's identity is verified. And finally, remember, SSL doesn't just protect passwords or payment info. It protects everything, your cookies, your messages, your data, even the pages you view. Without it, anyone on the same network could intercept or modify your traffic. So next time you see that little padlock icon, don't take it for granted. Behind it lies decades of math, cryptography, and collaboration between browser vendors, certificate authorities, and engineers around the world, all to keep your online world safe and private. Thanks for watching and see you next time.